What's going on, everybody? My name is John Hammond. A little bit more Rice TCAP Panda CTF. Some more challenges in the cryptography category. This challenge is called Wrong Way for 150 points. Doesn't have a ton of solves, so it's a little bit harder to do. I guess esoteric, kind of obscure. It says, did you know that you've been going the wrong way the entire time? And we're given just this text, which doesn't help all that much. Um, Maybe this was tough to figure out. Uh, I certainly had a hard time figuring it out. Uh, props to my teammate who kind of discovered, well, we could go ahead and go the wrong way and that when we're normally trying to encode or decode or work with some variables, uh, we will decode them with base64 if they look strange or odd. In our case, we want to encode this. So I'm actually going to create this variable. I'll just say... Um, C, <laughs> whatever we want to call that. We'll paste that in here. Um, and C.encode with UTF-8 will make it bytes for us. UTF-8 there. Now we could go ahead and pass this to base64, the Python 3 module in this case, and we can go ahead and encode that. So let's go ahead and actually do just that. I'll take this kind of command here, and let's base 64b 64 encode this, and that is literally our flag that we kind of need to massage and put in the right format. It says RTCP, unexpected places. That's very strange and very odd. So literally what the flag would end up looking like is when we put in the correct uh, syntax here is unexpected places. Did I type all that right? Unexpected, who cares? Okay, unexpected places. That is uh, the flag that we would go ahead and submit for that challenge. The other ones, that's some interesting tiers or T, has a very strange challenge prompt, as all the others seem to have as well. Uh, and we're given text that looks like base 32. We can tell that it's base 32 because it's not using really all the numbers that's available to it. Uh, it all has pretty much capital letters. That's what we're constantly going to see for base 32. And there's an equal sign trailing that could be used for padding. If you see a lot of equal signs, much more than base 64, I think you'll see a max of two in that case, uh, then you're certainly looking at base 32. So let me actually just fire that up in CyberChef, and that's going to be kind of the, a great and quick and easy tool to be able to look at these, because otherwise we'd be doing a lot of encoding and decoding in Python. This just makes it super quick and super simple. So when you're looking at that within CyberChef, we know, okay, theoretically we have base 32, and let's go ahead and grab that. We could use base32 from base32, so we decode it. And this looks like, again, base64. What I'm going to actually use is just going to search for the term from, so I'll get a quick listing of all of the potential uh, bases we might be able to convert to or from. From base64 doesn't particularly give us anything interesting or worthwhile, but we know, hey, the character set that it's using is probably pretty close to that as a base. So you could use base62. Again, still nothing particularly interesting with that output. Uh, Base 58 is actually what returns us something interesting. Let me remove that base 62, or there. So now you can see we have more output. Uh, this looks pretty similar to base 64, something else we might expect. Let me try that, base 64, that didn't work. Base 62 we could throw in there. Let me remove the base 64 in that case. So now we have something that again looks like base 64 place that in there. Now we have other text that is using other punctuation marks and other characters. Uh, that is normally a telltale sign for me that we're looking at base 85. That has much more punctuation marks in there. So I'll grab that one from base 85 and finally throughout all of our conversions and hexadecimal or uh, whatever whatever bases we tend to be manipulating with we can see our flag. That's some salty tea. I blame all those tears. That is our flag. We can go ahead and submit that. Just a lot of poking around within CyberChef. That was kind of a little bit of a trial and error or process of elimination because we were trying bases that might get us somewhere. If I could see, well, I don't have as much printable bytes as I would want in that case, maybe we could go down route to XOR things or maybe that's some sort of data that we could manipulate. It's encrypted or encoded in some way. But I wanted to poke around and try all those other encodings just in case. The next one says, that's a lot of stuff. In this case, we're given just a ton of numbers. When I first looked at this, I thought this was odd because while I was seeing uh, numbers that all seem to be octal, they all seem to be less than eight, uh, but that was even the wrong way to go. A teammate kind of noticed, well, I see the number 20 over and over again, and I thought that was odd because between every set of threes, we have 20 in that case. Um, and I was thinking, oh, well, maybe that 20, because that's, uh, that's a space when you refer to it as hex, so maybe this is, in fact, hex. I'll go fire back up to CyberChef. I'll clear out this recipe here and I'll paste that in as our new input. Now, in this case, we're working with hex. So let me go ahead and decode that from hex. And now you'll see we have more numbers that have just simply been decoded. 
that is, in this case, actually octal. Again, you can see, hey, this is all less than eight for every single digits. So let's go from octal, drag that in. And of course, this looks like base 64 or some of the other uh, encodings that we might have seen. Base 64, let's go from that. And now we do have the flag for that challenge. Conversions are cool cats. So that was just a little bit of spice within Cyber Chef. If you haven't seen Cyber Chef before, it's honestly awesome. There are a ton of great things. And if you don't exactly know what you want to be working with, you could try Magic. Uh, depending on the case or challenge that you're working with, you could see that it can track down some worthwhile information. And even that, okay, it just found the flag without us doing anything else. You could specify depth, you can specify intensive mode to try a bunch of things. But in that case, it would just crank out and find that RTCP. You can even specify that as a crib maybe if you're looking for it um, and magic might very well just work for you at least something worthy to try and put on your your checklist for capture the flag so thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this video that's the end of it if you did like this video please do like comment and subscribe join the discord server there's a link in the description follow me on the twitter on the instagram on the facebooks uh and the youtube obviously <laughs> thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next video